Our next speaker is, um, you know, in politics you need a mix, in a political party you need a mix of, of mature people and you need young people. And ultimately the lifeblood of any political party comes with young, enthusiastic people coming in and then being able to contribute. And so with that in mind, I'd like to welcome the, uh, the, the medal-winning uh, Frankie Ruffalo to the stage. Frankie, come on. Hello, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, if we're allowed to say that anymore. Uh, my name is Frankie, I'm 19. I'm chairman of the Devon branch, uh, along with Douglas Hamley, who's in the room somewhere. He's an absolute lad. And uh, by getting active and having stood for election multiple times, I've managed to get us mentioned in Exeter's local paper on at least six occasions in name, uh, with cracking headlines such as, man who vowed to throw protester off bridge in Brexit row cautioned. <laughs> And this violence so toward against us only gets us more publicity, but they never learn, do they? Uh, just before the European elections, I was in the pub with a friend of mine. This was just after the brawl over the Kekistan flag broke out. And he said to me, Frankie, do you really think For Britain has a future? Now, I thought that was a bit rich coming from some, a senior figure in UKIP who admitted he was voting Brexit party. Well, I'm here today to say, look, it gives me great pleasure to launch the youth wing and say, yes, we do. Now, you may think that all young people in Britain are completely brainwashed and support the political establishment that is the EU, the, La the Labour Party, and the young Conservatives seem to be doing quite well at the moment. But we saw, in, if you look at the rest of the world, in France, a lot of the support for Marine Le Pen the Joan of Arc of today came from young people who do not want to live in an Islamic country where women are forced to cover up, where terrorist attacks are part and parcel of living in a big city. We will not have it here. Britain will be British, France will be French, and Holland will be Dutch. We will not have it changed. I'm wearing on my lapel a white ribbon to, in solidarity with the pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong, where British values live on and where student protesters, young people, are standing up to tyranny, standing up to authoritarianism and censorship for liberty and freedom. And young people in this country are capable of doing the same and we must take the fight against the far left here as well. Uh, because I live in a city which unfortunately voted Remain, I often get told, uh, oh, it's sad someone your age supports Brexit, or you're too young to be a gammon. <laughs> well, I'd rather be gammon than soy. No offence to the vegans in the room. But, <laughs> um, but actually, um, oh, I think they're wrong. I think it's encouraging that not everyone is apathetic as a historic vote is being betrayed. I think it's encouraging that young people will stand up to authoritarianism, whether it's left, right or religious. It's encouraging that we will stand up for human rights, stand for the West and say, I am proud to be British. The polls that said that young people all support Remain are the same polls that said that Remain would win. They're about as reliable as a bar chart on a Lib Dem leaflet. <laughs> and when the politically correct dominance of society starts in education, that is where the inevitable fight back will start as well. So let me give you some examples of some personal experience. I remember the sort of PC propaganda gradually stepped up when I was in secondary school. 
Uh, we have school assemblies saying why that we should take in more refugees when there's not only is there no way to process them, we're already a very densely populated country. The, we have people like Jacob Rees-Mogg talking about building over our beautiful green belt because of the population. And we already have a very generous foreign aid budget to help these people in their own countries. We're not going to solve the world's problems by importing them all here. I remember once in English, our homework was to go home and look at adverts and find something to get offended about. That's how ridiculous it is. Uh, I had at least two teachers would tell us, don't read the Daily Mail, read the Guardian. The Daily Mail is racist. Now, I'm not here to defend the conservative tabloid press. A lot of them are pretty awful. For instance, a lot of them were very supportive of Theresa May, when I think the entire country are now in agreement that she's a bit of a silly bitch. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but for a racist newspaper, the Daily Mail played a huge part in bringing about justice for Stephen Lawrence. So uh, if you look at the actual curriculum, we were actually taught in history about uh, black people in America from starting from slavery, rightly, it's important to remember that was wrong, and that Britain, we can be proud to say that Britain fought the slave trade, but it went right up to black people today of talking about police shootings and perceived discrimination. Now, I'm not saying that kids in the classroom shouldn't be able to discuss these sort of issues of police brutality and race relations. They shouldn't, I'm not saying they shouldn't be allowed to discuss that at all, but it's too recent to be considered history. Now, we weren't told explicitly to support uh, Black Lives Matter, but it's, uh, we would say the, it was the narrative was the same. This narrative of oppression, this pessimistic worldview uh, when it comes to race relations. We weren't taught the facts that didn't fit the, this false narrative of white privilege. So while uh, the average white American family may earn more than the average black family, Asian American families are out earning both of them. And if you break it further down by specific ethnicities, black people who immigrate to America are doing pretty well. In fact, they're doing better than certain white demographics. We are Britain, the United States, are nations of equals, and we will fight to keep it that way. We, not, we will not have the BBC and police forces advertising jobs that whites cannot apply for. It's imp <laughs> it directly implies that people of colour cannot achieve things on their own merit. We'll fight for real equality and say there is nothing positive about positive discrimination. Now, I know everyone in this room feels the same way, but I am sick to the back teeth of being called a racist. Well, I'll tell you, when I went to Tommy Robinson's Brexit betrayal march in December with my um, girlfriend at the time, who was Chinese, it wasn't people like us who racially abused her. It was leftists and Muslims who would say to me, did you buy your Thai bride for 30 pounds off the internet? Yeah. You don't, ethnic minorities don't even need to wrong think in order to be subject to racial abuse to the left. They only need to date somebody who does. We will call them out on their hypocrisy at every opportunity. I mean, we saw with Justin Trudeau, a recent example, he will call, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting angry now, <laughs> but he will call other people racist and Islamophobic for objecting to ISIS militants returning to Canada. When you dig up his history, he was black facing uh, just te only 10 or 20 years ago. I think a lot of people in British politics who are the worst race baiters will have a lot of awful skeletons in the closet as well, such as, um, what was it, it was John Burko who called Tommy Robinson a repulsive, a repellent individual, when actually he's got said a lot of pretty awful, far more awful things in the past. Now, in order to stand for our laws, for our beautiful culture and for freedom of speech, we have to stand in every local election possible to give people a box in which to put their cross to make themselves heard. Now, I am standing in a local by-election, which just happens to be in a leave voting constituency. 
and we could do very well here, much better than before in Exeter. I'm going to learn from the mistakes I made before, and it, it, eventually we, I will get in there. Because the fight can st start on a local level. We saw a council recently, a council in Greater Manchester, banning people from attaching uh, giant poppies to lampposts. We saw, um, just up the road from me, in Biddeford, the uh, council, they were trying to rename it. It's called uh, The Little White Town from a book because the houses were whitewashed to prevent the spread of cholera. And the council leader, a conservative, has said we have to change it because some some permanently offended idiot <laughs> might perceive it to be racist. We have to stand up for our beauty country's beautiful identities. And my local council, Exeter City Council, or Exeter Shitty Council as it is now, <laughs> have passed a motion recently to um, resist voter ID laws, claiming that this is voter suppression, when they will happily pass anti-Brexit motions and suppress the votes of 17.4 million people. And when I get into that council, I will call out these fat-faced traitors and their hypocrisy and demand that the EU flag will never be flown from any of the council's buildings ever again. Stand with me, stand for election in May. Even if you're just a paper candidate, it'll get the numbers up and it will get us that step closer to victory. Thank you, everyone.